In the most recent episode of Hell of a Boss, Crimson referred to Osmodius as the weakest and most non-threatening of the seven deadly sins. While this was at least partially just trying to insult Osmodius, a lot of fans wondered what this meant for a sort of power hierarchy among them, so I'm going to break it all down. Now, the popular theory for the hierarchy of the Seven Princes is that the most powerful are at the top and the weakest are at the bottom. This would put Lucifer at the top as the ruler of the Pride Ring, and who is indeed confirmed to be the most powerful being in all of Hell. At the bottom would be Belphegor, the ruler of the Sloth Ring, and then two steps above that would be Osmodius, the ruler of the Lust Ring. Other theories persist that only the upper three rulers are particularly powerful, those being Lucifer, Satan, and Beelzebub, as they are traditionally known to be part of a sort of unholy trinity against God. Now, Osmodius may be literally the physically weakest sin, but that would be surprising considering that Osmodius is not just the ruler of the Lust Ring, but is also a king in the Ars Goetia. He holds two titles of royalty. In addition to this, Osmodius seems to have one of the highest quality of living for his people. Beelzebub has extravagant parties that some hellhounds can come to, and a seemingly nice wilderness for them to run around in, but we mostly see hellhounds being treated as servants or even slaves everywhere else. And I doubt the locals here are living very nice lives, considering the state of pounds and the massive amount of hellhounds that are orphans. In Wrath, the imps basically live to farm and fight in war. In Pride, you're trapped under the thumb of the overlords. Greed is so dangerous that even Osmodius is afraid to send Fizzarelli there. While the Envy Ring is implied to be nice, and the Sloth Ring seems luxurious, the Lust Ring is among one of the best places to live, it would seem, and while the Sloth Ring is nice, as I said, it comes with the huge addiction issues its locals clearly have to pharmaceutical pills. Lust is a place where you are essentially born to be a sex worker, and there is a lot of deeper issues there if we choose to dissect the show from an overly serious angle. But at the end of the day, the succubus do seem to enjoy being sexual, even if their system isn't the ideal way for them to indulge in it on a personal level. The luxury the succubus have in Hell seems largely due to not just Osmodius insisting on his lifestyle, but the succubus and Incubus being rather supportive of his vision. In many ways, they get to be elites, and the succubus, who are naturally less interested in sex work, probably find other jobs within the Lust Ring to simply help support the overall infrastructure, while the ones who are interested in it can go on to be big celebrities like Verosica. The same way that some imps fight in war, and others simply farm, there are always different ways to support the ring. With all that in mind, you'd think Osmodius would be rather powerful, but I think instead, he's traded a lot of the power he naturally wields in order to create this particular infrastructure that fits his his idea of an erotic lifestyle, and that can support his entire community of succubus. We see in the episode that Osmodius has factories where he creates erotic toys, something we can't really show explicitly here even if censored in the show. It was explained in episode 2 of season 1 that the Robofizzes were made in Big Ozzy's factory, but in this episode, Osmodius explained that Fizz himself is part of Mammon's overall brand, Mammon also being a jester-looking demon. Even outside of Mammon, Osmodius seems very reliant on the other rings for his ring's survival. While rings like Wrath provide something necessary for all of Hell with its food production, what Osmodius offers from his factories is simply mass-produced luxury items, which a lot of the poor masses of Hell shouldn't be able to regularly afford. The more Fizzarelli and Verosica and other Lust Ring celebrities can be loaned out and performed for others, the more those princes can benefit, and Osmodius only ends up getting a fraction of what the princes get out of it. Otherwise, hiring Fizz would only cost Mammon money, and as the Prince of Greed, that is the last thing he would want. He would have no reason to hire him. All of this is to say that Osmodius has probably signed a lot of contracts like the one presented to him in this episode, without ever really looking them over. He probably signed away a lot of power and shares and profits and such in deals that ultimately made the Lust Ring able to thrive, but in a way that doesn't give Osmodius any leverage over anybody else, much less the other princes. Demonic deals seem to be an important part of the power structure of Hell, and any deal Osmodius makes as a royal is considered exceptionally binding, as was explained in this recent episode. So over time, Osmodius seems to have sold a lot of his power and potential power so that he could focus more on his ring of Hell being the kind of place he wants to live. And at the end of the day, he is very happy. He may not have more power than Mammon, but he lives in a beautiful home with the demon he loves, surrounded by an obedient entourage, and every night he just goes out and has fun. 
During the day, he gets a lot of time with Fizz, who is also his business partner, and even when Fizz isn't there, Osmodius seems genuinely happy to just use his time and resources to expand the science of erotic technology. But it seems that he could potentially be weaker than a lot of the other royals, not just the ones in the rings above, but perhaps the ones below as well. Below Lust is the Envy and Sloth rings, ruled by Leviathan and Belphegor respectively. The medical industry and its addictive prescriptions are both much more necessary in Hell as far as industries go, and with that alone, I imagine Belphegor has a lot more leverage over Osmodius. In terms of power, Belphegor is known for being lazy, however, as the ruler of Sloth, and industry may be the only thing Belphegor has over Osmodius, but we can't say for sure. Leviathan, however, I imagine to be phenomenally powerful, with most fans linking this royal to the more primordial chaos demons of the Lovecraftian nature. The Envy Ring that Leviathan rules is theorized to be more upper class than most rings as well. With Leviathan being a sea monster in biblical lore, my current theory is that it is a ring that is isolated because it is one large ocean, making it hard to access for most of the other species. Even the sea-based demons of the Greed Ring Ocean, like the Lone Sharks, may have trouble getting there, as the society of the NV demons may be in the dark depths of the bottom of their ocean, where others simply cannot withstand the pressure, even if they can breathe underwater. The isolation and perhaps ancient primordial power that Leviathan has probably led to Envy being a nicer ring, where its exclusivity was particularly interesting to the other demons of hell. The Envy app on Blitz's phone gives the impression that Leviathan is working with Vox and Velvet to control social media, where I theorize the Envy demons are able to show off their lives in the Envy ring that are otherwise impossible for the demons of other rings to witness. Unlike Osmodius, however, Leviathan seems to have been able to create this lifestyle without there being some massive expense to his people, the way that succubus largely have to be sex workers to support the industry in the Lust Ring. And because of that, I think Leviathan may just genuinely be a more powerful figure than Osmodius and perhaps a lot of the others as well. Beelzebub I believe to be more powerful than Osmodius in terms of pure strength, but like Osmodius, a lot of her power seems to have been traded simply to create a lifestyle that she enjoys. At the end of the day, I believe just in terms of raw power though, she is probably stronger than Osmodius with her beast mode, but we really can't say for sure. Finally, there is Satan who is primarily focused on strength, and I cannot imagine him being less powerful than any of the other royals, besides of course Lucifer. So we can't really say for sure, but the only prince I see Osmodius as being more powerful than is Belphegor, but even that is iffy. Crimson's remark about Osmodius being the weakest of sins, however, was largely just about where Osmodius had built himself up with his lifestyle and infrastructure. Between his business dealings and falling in love with Fizz, he set himself up for failure, and like Stolas, he could face repercussions for having his relationship go public. All of this made Crimson feel very safe, as it made Osmodius the weakest prince in terms of who Crimson could take advantage of, though it may not have really meant anything about his overall power level when compared to other princes in various other ways. But what do you guys think? And why do you think that? And isn't thinking a little difficult after 8 minutes of talking about a cartoon? Let me know how hard you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.